Okay, guys, so this is now the third yeah. uh, and final, unless Pro Photo gives us something else. Oh my God, We're, we made it. Kind of episode of unless Pro Photo gives us something else. Is that what you just yeah. said? <laughs> Uh, we're going through the Profoto lights, maybe which one would be for you. Uh, we talked about the A1 already, if you haven't seen it, and the B2 in the last one. This is the B1X, so this is like, I guess, the flagship of the, the, the OCF system. Um, it's Profoto's battery-powered mono light, uh, 500 watt seconds of power. Um, this is probably the light that you see me use the most. Um, it's everything you think that you would want in a mono light. You know, it's got the, the built-in radio, it's got the optical slave, it's got, you know, monoling light. It's, it's basically, it, it's a full-on studio strobe, <laughs> but it runs on battery, which clips on and off really easily like that. And of course, you can check your battery here. Battery gauge. Oh, you actually charged it, look at you. I charged it before we came. <laughs> um, so this comes in a lot of ways. You can get it in like the single kit, which has the, uh, actually the last time I, the, when I first, when I got my B1s, these are B1Xs, um, they were, I bought two of the individual ones. They have little cases, very fancy. But this one came in like a backpack kit, which is pretty cool. I'll just walk off camera for a second. Um, right, so we've got, it comes in a backpack with two lights and they give you um actually when you get this version of the kit you get the faster charger which is this guy and it's important to note these charge ridiculously fast like 45 yeah. minutes maybe yeah. and yeah, you're the fast charger is really really fast because I, I think you said the best that battery powered lighting is like having a having is like babysitting or, yeah. or like having a pet because yeah. you have to constantly like feed it you know yeah. so yeah you can't put it in your closet for two months and pull it out and hope the batteries i mean they'll probably will uh, drop down a bit so or, or they go bad over time you want to yeah. use it you gotta exercise it so okay so I think for me, well, okay, first of all, let me just point out a couple things that, that we were talking about. So just like all the other Profoto lights, it takes all of their accessories. This one's got a few features that the, the B2 doesn't have, right? So because the snout here is longer, you've got uh, the numbers on here. If you guys don't know, some of the Profoto uh, accessories, the, the, the hard reflectors mostly, um, have little drawings on them to show the degrees of the focus of the light and that matches up with these numbers. So if you're using like a magnum you can look at it and it has like a little drawing on it and you put it on the different uh, numbers to have different amount of focus. So you have that with this light. Not so much on the B2 because it's such a small base. Yeah. Also, uh, we had talked about you could change the, the flash tube yourself but not only that, you can remove this glass in the front and you can put a dome on there. Oh, that's that, right. That's going to become relevant if you use something like a uh, like a beauty dish, where, where that kind of does make a difference. Yeah, you can use a beauty dish without it. With it, it's a little bit nicer. You know, you definitely see a bit of a difference uh, there. So you got that with this. If you use those kind of modifiers, um, this is a good light for you. Um, it does have, you know, again, all the control and stuff. I guess my, my, my downside to this, uh, or my initial downside would be that it's heavy, relatively speaking. Yeah and no. Like I, th I think for the power you're getting out of it to hand it to somebody, it's not that bad. But yeah, you're not putting on an, artic an articulating arm. You're not putting on like a shady setup. Like you have to have a legit stand. You have to have proper counterbalance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like five or six pounds. I mean, you could certainly have somebody hold it. That yeah. it, no, without question, I'm not saying that. But let's like, say this would be two. You could have them put the pack on their shoulder, put the head up on a stick, and hold it for hours. It probably yeah. wouldn't be so tiring. Right. This has got all your weight in one spot. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. So if you're gonna have, you know, if you're a studio photographer like I primarily am, and I'm usually using stands and I'm usually using stuff, it's really not an issue. That's why you probably see me use this the most. Uh, as far as like a, a downside on my end, um, where the LED readout for me kind of gets oh, into yeah. trouble because a lot of times we're overhead and we have no idea what the power settings are. Um, is that? It, it, we were just talking about this too, right? Like you don't always need to know what the power is actually set at, but if you're one stop away from being at full power or completely down and you need more or less, you have to restart your whole ratio over. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, like if you have other lights going on, you're like, oh, now I gotta change everything. Yeah. Which is fine if you know that when you're walking into it. Right. Um, which can also happen a lot if you use the Profoto system, which is uh, you use the TTL to set your base exposure, right? So you're just taking a shot. You don't even know what it's at. Right. And then you set it manually, start tweaking it. Um, if you just come into it and like put it like at five to start or whatever, you'd be less likely to have that happen. But yeah, I can see that being a problem. Yeah, and the only other thing that I, that gets to me is that the umbrella adapter on the front, like you can't just use every umbrella that's ever made ever. There's some that are too, the rods are too big or whatever. Yeah, because the, there's, there's a tension inside. It's a very specific. Yeah, and you basically have to like, you basically jam the umbrella through it. I remember the first time I ever did it, I thought I was going to break the light. Actually, when I, when you told me that's how you do it, I was like, no. Yeah, it's like a little ball inside and you push it past that and it holds it with pressure. So. If it does have a thicker, um, a thicker rod, a th a thicker rod it, it might not fit. Which is what almost all collapsibles have. Like anything that's a trifold that goes smaller into your bag, it just won't fit. Yeah. Which, which is like the smallest thing to gripe about because this light is phenomenal. 
Yeah, and I'm also thinking like that. See, to me, like that, and I get that your tool should be versatile, use it for whatever, but that umbrella I would use with the A1. You know what I'm saying? I can have it in that kit. Like, I feel like with this, I'm using the big, the big umbrellas anyways. But, yeah. but no, I, I see what you're saying, though. Yeah. Versatility is important. I mean, I don't think it would, I'd buy or not buy it for that reason, of course. No, 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 no. Um, it's a small thing. I mean, I wish, and I know Profoto has said that they can't do it because of the design, uh, but I'll point this out because I'm sure somebody will say it, is that you can't charge these while they're being used. That, that was from day one. Yeah. As soon as, before these even came out, people yeah. were like, well, is there going to be an adapter to run from the wall? And I'm going to tell you right now, if you have this thing, you don't want to run from the wall. Yeah. Like, you, it's, you, that's you the cool part it. about it. You'd, you'd never use it. I mean, that, that's the truth, right? Take, take, get a second battery, have it charging. You're good to go. Yeah, and the batteries aren't that bad um, as far as like how long they last. Uh, for, with how much power you're getting out of them, yeah. the, the 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 rate at which they charge is insane to me. Yeah. Insane to me. We've been ready to go in like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, they're they're, they're fast. They they do a good job. Uh, like you said, and I think I said in the one video, the the I forgot because I went from acutes to these. Like, I, it, it was amazing to me, like, how quickly I got used to not having any wires. Yeah, actually, I got spoiled because I was a big Speedatron guy for, like, my entire career. And then he's got these, and I'm using them all the time. I'm like, I don't think I pulled out my Speedatrons in forever. Yeah. But it's, like, cool because let's say that you're sitting in here and you're doing a shot and you're like, oh, it'd be cool if the light was coming through the window. Boom. Well, you just there. walk out there with the light and throw it out there. It's like, it's done. It's like, it doesn't matter, you know? Whereas, like, you don't run a cable, you don't. So, yeah, I think that's a huge, huge Or thing. getting cables in the shots. How many times did that happen to you? Yeah. And now it's not an issue. Yeah, exactly. So, I think that's huge. I love running stuff on battery power, but battery power though isn't always the solution, right? Sometimes you're in a studio, you're shooting a catalog, you're shooting thousands of pictures, maybe you don't want to deal with battery power. They do make the D2, which yes. we don't have to show. That would be the, the solution to that. You don't go battery power for that. So I think battery power isn't for everybody, but for people that are constantly on location or that just really need to work in a really clean space, like let's say for instance, you're shooting in offices and stuff and doing corporate portraits. These are fantastic. You don't have to like go up to the receptionist and be like, where can I plug in? You know, you can literally uh, put the light anywhere that you want. And I think that's a huge advantage of using battery powered lights. If I was a product photographer in the studio all day, I would 100% buy plug-in lights. I would not run off batteries. I do uh, want to point out that's amazing how consistent they are as being battery powered lights because plenty of times recycling issues or it says it's recycled but it's still off by a little bit or whatever these have been dead on every time we've shot i think we've never had an issue with the, uh, the quality of light is amazing um, i'm really psyched on it and i do like the fact that it's you can change everything yourself yeah exactly me too so. i mean i would say right so for me like okay so i guess now we're at the end of the series so i would say me being, if I'm to define myself as like more of a commercial fashion portrait type person, if I had to choose one system, I probably would choose this, the, okay. the B1Xs. I think that would be the, the light that I would, if I could only have one, this would do everything I needed it to do. Okay. Um, I'm a multiple lights kind of guy, so I would like to go with the A1s, but how could I not mix A1s with B1Xs? How so could you not? You'd want to mix them, yeah. And so, you just have the remote. So like yeah. I said, you can use this as your key, the A1 mm -hmm. on your camera as your fill, and you're just rocking. Yeah, so you feel like you would need both. Yeah, yeah I just like it. Yeah, I think that, that as much as I like having a speed light and type light, like a small light, so the A1 would be, um, I always tell people to buy them first. I have it in my kit. I hardly ever use them these days. Yeah, you, you do not pull them So for me, I don't, I don't use as much as I used to, so I, don't, I think I could live without it, and I think I could just go with these. So yeah. that, that's where my mind would be well, invested. Regardless, if you ever wanted to evolve your style or your kit, it's a closed system. You could just keep on adding and taking away as you want. That's exactly it too, right? You start off as a, a location portrait, uh, senior portraits, weddings, such like that. You buy some A1s or, uh, you know, then all of a sudden you start a, a portrait studio, uh, you buy these and, and you're good to go. And remote stays with you yeah. the entire time. And if you buy the D2s, which are plug-in, they also works. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so it's just insane. I mean, um, there's been plenty of other uh, systems out there that if you buy another model, it's a whole nother, you're starting all over again. Even the mounts on some of them have yeah. changed. So, um, oh, the mounts, the mounts are the coolest mounts, I think, in the game. Yeah, I, I will say that. <laughs> I think, yeah, I've used a lot of strobes. I think Profoto definitely, I mean, that, the way it slides on, the, the, yeah, it's just, probably not. Okay. You guys know how to Profoto lights go on, I hope. If you're watching this, hopefully you know that. Watch uh, any other video ever that we do. Yeah, right? It's basically a, a rubberized uh, sl slip-on thing, which allows you to focus it. That's really the key, right? Yeah. Um, even though you don't always have to focus it, it does allow that focus ability, but it's also super great to put stuff on. It doesn't really matter where you rotate. That's right. Because like, if, like on my speed of trans, if I rotate the light a little bit, it might slip out and come off the, the mount system because it's like a screw that locks in. Right, exactly. 
So you can do any angle of anything you want. It's just very versatile. And once it's on there, you can spin it around. Do Super. It and it's very durable. I mean, I'm, I'm just psyched on it. Um, yeah. So let us know what you guys think. Like, yeah, right. What, is, what has been your trial and error with all the Pro Photo System? What would be your preferred mixture? Would you like the B2s with A1s? Would you like to put the B2s with the B1Xs like you've been doing forever? Yes. The A1 didn't exist till a few months ago. That's right, yeah. So I haven't owned one, so it's hard for me to say, like, like maybe I'll become addicted to them. Yeah, I mean, I'm a speed light guy, so like I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, I definitely like the idea of just having small flashes in my bag, yeah. but I'm so used to this now that... Uh, that I think I would be wanting for the power because I love to like crank them and, and shoot a like F16 and stuff, so. Yeah, I mean, this is the studio out of your bag. You could, yeah. you could, you just one extra bag and you have a studio. Yeah, exactly. That's what's crazy about it. So yeah, I think they make a great system, but yeah, put some some comments down the list. Know if there's, let us know what else you want to see. If you want to know about some other kind of systems that we might have, yeah. uh, that we have access to, uh, we'll talk about it at least as best as we can. Be sure to subscribe um, to see more stuff from 1200 Sessions. We're gonna do some more shooting stuff. We're gonna involve Sheila. Yes, Sheila. We, we never mentioned yeah, Sheila. Yeah, we never mentioned Sheila, so we'll mention her well, now. Well, you can see Sheila in our, in our water drip video. That's right. We that did was some, a live stream. Yeah, yeah, that was really fun. We dripped some water. We're going to yeah. do some more fun stuff like that. Follow Seth on uh, Last X Witness on most social stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.